This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, 30 years ago, some 40,000 Native Americans and their supporters participated in a historic cross-country cross march called the Longest Walk. They marched from San Francisco to Washington, D.C., to protest congressional legislation that would have abrogated treaties protecting Native American sovereignty. As a result, 11 bills were defeated, and the American Indian Religious Freedom Act uh, of 1978 was passed. This week marks the close of another cross-country march commemorating the original Longest Walk. Thousands are expected to gather in Washington, D.C., Friday after a five-month-long journey across the country to draw attention to the state of the environment and press for the protection of sacred Native American sites. Starting out on February 11th of this year, participants walked, ran, camped, and picked up piles of uncollected trash along two routes across the country, from Alcatraz to the nation's capital. Along the way, they have compiled a list of demands from Native communities that will be delivered to Congressman John Conyers on Friday. This is a sampling of some of the voices from the second Longest Walk. The Longest Walk is an environmental walk. It's also a walking for issues of Native American interests, uh, Native issues, uh, the most important being sacred sites and the environment. You know, we have protections for, like, the Liberty Bell, Statue of Liberty, Arlington National Cemetery. We don't have an equal protection for sacred sites for indigenous people here in America. And that just seems a little bit unreasonable and unfair. Why would we have them for uh, other things, but not for the people, the first peoples of America? My name is Wayne Kroon. I'm a Shoshone Bannock from Fort Hall, Idaho. I'm 20 years old. I've been walking since February 11th. And I'm My name is Bonita Eagle von Leonard, 27 years old, Warm Springs, Wasco. My name is Randy Blakely. I'm from uh, San Francisco Mission District, Fillmore District. Uh, I started February 11th on Alcatraz at the Sunrise Ceremony, and uh, I'll be going to Washington, D.C. As we cross each reservation, each piece of land that we go through, we hear the people's struggles, each reservation that we go through. And I realize that that's probably the most, that is the most important thing that our, our, our biggest, uh, our biggest mission is to, to build this manifest so we can present Washington, D.C. with, um, with the struggles that are out there, that are still out there, and that some, some were even around in the 78 walk, on the first walk. You know, times are changing fast, and we have to adapt with them, so that's what we're trying to do on this walk, is to adapt with the changes that are going to happen. A lot of us weren't grown with the traditions, you know, and don't know the ceremonies, don't know our own language, and, you know, a lot of us don't care. Maybe we were born in the city, or maybe our parents lost it because their parents lost it from boarding schools. And now, you know, I think it's our opportunity to take it back and start learning our language, learning our songs, and standing up with Pride. So this is a, a, a wake-up call to the people, mm -hmm. and I'm determined to walk to Washington, mm -hmm. no matter what. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm 60 years old, mm -hmm. or 60 years young. I'm from the northern island of Japan called Hokkaido, where a lot of indigenous people are still living. They're called Ainu, and I'm I'm here for represent some of their culture as well. Most, most of the main things that I noticed that um, that Native Americans are facing in Kansas is um it has to do with the water, it has to do with their water, it has to do with what you know where where the water is coming from, how and um, how they're using it, their water rights on 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 reservation. We're worried about our children. Worrying about our children being able to, you know, being able to play and, you know, go swimming, being able to drink water, being able to bathe in the water, you know, and we're thinking about the next seven generations. Some of the voices of those on the second longest walk were joined now in Washington, D.C., by veteran Native American leader, co founder of the American Indian Movement, Dennis Banks, one of the organizers of the longest walk. Dennis Banks, welcome to Democracy Now! How does it feel to have arrived in Washington, D.C., having left San Francisco in the middle of February? Well, the, uh, the journey was absolutely great. And uh, it just, uh, we, it, you know, we made, made a lot of contacts, thousands and thousands of contacts uh, with people, one-to-one uh, -one with group sessions and uh, about the environment and about the issues that we're walking about. And it, it just feels absolutely great to be here. Can you talk about wh why you embarked on this second walk, the first march 30 years ago, and why this one? 30 years ago, we, uh, uh, we were facing um, 
11 bills, 11 pieces of legislation, which would have terminated uh, the, our relationship with the federal government. It would have abrogated all of the treaties, and it would have um, it took away our hunting rights, fishing rights, uh, all the rights that we have on the reservation. And so we walked across this country, uh, 3,600 miles, and we collected a million five hundred thousand signatures along the way, and we presented that and other evidence, and we defeated. We we had all of these be, uh, bills were defeated, um, and then this year, about five years ago, when we started the pre-planning of this, uh, we noticed uh, on our reservation the the global warming effect, and we realized then that we would that would be a major part of our walk. So. Uh, and still raising some of the issues that face Native people. And so it, it, this is an environmental walk uh, first, and it's, a, and it's also raising the issues, the critical issues that face us, the protection of sacred sites. Um, uh, for instance, 30 years ago, we asked for protective legislation for the San Francisco peaks out in uh, Arizona. Uh, 30 years later, nothing is ever done, and they continue to uh, to disrupt uh, the ceremonies that at least 20 different tribes go to go up there. Uh, all of these protecting sacred sites like Sand Creek, the, the massacre that happened, uh, Wounded Knee, uh, we're asking uh, for a great deal of uh, protective legislation uh, because our graves are being trampled on. Uh, you know, in 1990, we had over 1,200 graves dug up in Kentucky, um, and, and there's there's a lot of uh, states which uh, it's only a misdemeanor to, dis to disturb uh, graves. Uh, but a lot of our bones are being kept in, um, you know, the artifacts and bones of our people being kept in universities. Uh, University of California, Berkeley, they have 25,000 uh, remains of, of, of our people, in, and, and, and many universities have that. So we're asking that these universities, uh, that Congress, uh, tap on the sol shoulders of these universities and say it's time to to put to rest uh, the bones that you have in, in your boxes and your basements. Uh, Dennis, can you talk to us about the what you've seen from the ground, obviously, in this epic journey, uh, uh, the recreation of the first one 30 years ago, in terms of the progress or lack of progress of Native American communities throughout the country? What's changed uh, in the past 30 years? Well, uh, for one thing, uh, in the 30 years, a lot of gaming uh, has come because we were able to defeat these bills. Um, uh, a lot of gaming institutions have, have um, um, uh, been 